Okay, and the last part of this three series about uh, networking fundamentals, we will speak about communication protocols. Look at it like this. In the previous sections, we talked about IP mainly, version 4 and version 6. Practically, when talking about IP, we were talking on how computers can find each other on the network. Something like a routing concept. How we name the computers. How we create addresses for the computers. And when I say computers, any device. I, any device which uses IP. But when talking about communication protocols like TCP, we are talking about how data is transferred between these computers. Exactly the same as what happens in a post office. When talking about IP, I'm talking about the addresses of the homes. When I'm talking about TCP, I'm talking about the letters. TCP is a way for a computer to put some data in a packet and send it on the network. It has an IP address for the destination. So IP will uh, make it possible for this packet to reach to the destination. Then the computer will open it and say, okay, this is a TCP packet with this data. This is what's the what this is the difference between general things like TCP, UDP, ICMP, and others, and IP. That's why for shorthand we say TCP IP. How to find computers, how to reach computers on the internet, how to deliver the data. TCP is transmission control protocol. It's designed to make sure that data is transferred intact. If you have a server and you have a file there and you have a client at your home, you have an IP here, you have an IP here, you download this file from this IP, from this server. When using TCP, you are 100% sure when this is done, you have the exact same packet here with no change at all. It has lots of overhead. It's like a long talk between two parties. It starts with something like a, your computer tells, hey, I want to contact you. It says, okay, I've, I got the message that you want to contact me. Please contact me. It says, okay, I heard you. I'm showing this one. I acknowledge your connection. Please give me this data. It says, okay, I'm giving it the part one to you. This is the data. This is a calculation based off this data. You get the data back, say, okay, I got the packet one. This is the data. I will do the same calculation to make sure that I've got it correctly. Please give me the packet two and three and four. It says, okay, this is the packet three. This is the connect data. This is the uh, calculation about this. It says, okay, this is okay, but I didn't got package two. Please send two again. It says, okay, two, resend the two. Say, okay, I've got the two, it's correct. But the four, the calculations do not match. Please resend the four. And lots and lots of talk, talking. It's like going in a party, finding someone, saying, are you Sarah? He said, okay, yes, I'm Sarah. Please show me your identifications. They will show you identifications. I don't know why. Say, okay, my friend Jody asked you to call him tomorrow at three o'clock. Are you, did you understand? Says, yes. Say, okay, please sign here. I want to show Jadi that you understood this. This is how TCP works. There is another protocol, by the way, which is called UDP. It is for user datagram protocol. It's not like this. It's like going to the party and just shouting, hey, Sarah, call Jadi tomorrow at five o'clock and just leaving. Very strange. It's like chatting with someone, shouting without confirming that you got my message. You got it correctly or not. Why do we have this? TCP is super cool. You download one file from a network and you are sure that you've got the correct file with exact correct data and you can write it to the CD and use it. You can run it. If one bit is changed, you cannot run a program. Most of the cases, at least. At least you will see some error somewhere, maybe. If 
10% is changed, you won't be able to run it correctly. So TCP is cool. But why do we have UTP if you are not sure that you are receiving the data, if you are receiving the correct data? Why do we have UDP? For some cool reason. You're talking with someone on a phone. You say, do you hear me? Says, yes, I hear you. Says, okay, please meet me tomorrow at five o'clock. Say, okay, I've got it. I will meet you. You are not exactly sure if they heard you correctly. Better example, you're watching a sport match on TV. Server is broadcasting it for your IP TV. It uses UDP. Okay, it uses TCP because you want to see the exact thing which is happening. Suddenly you have a disruption in the network. Your TV will request back the scene you missed. And after getting it, after two seconds, will continue showing what you need to see. But the quality is not that good, so it will stop showing you, will request the scenes which was kind of bad, and you are five seconds behind, but you are seeing it correctly. This is not what we are asking our TVs to do. We are asking our TVs to show us the live event, even in case of a fluctuation, just continue what you have. If you are talking with someone and say, do you hear me? And your voice is not 100% clear, you prefer the other party to say, yes, I hear you, not very well, but please continue, talk. If it's on TCP, in case of a single issue on the network, Every single bit should go correctly. If not, the receiver won't get anything. You need to retransmit. So on live streaming, UDP is nicer. You want it to be live, to be fast. You don't want to disruptions. You want to, if some packet is missed, okay, it's missed, no problem. It's like delivering free newspapers. You don't want someone to ring and check if you got your free newspaper. So TCP, is used when you need very reliable connection for exactly getting what is transmitted. UDP is used on voice, on uh, transmissions via live streams and these kind of stuff when you won't want to make sure or retransmit what is lost. There is another protocol, ICMP, Internet Control Messaging Protocol, and it is used for ping command. You've done this a lot. We try pinging something to make sure that our network is working correctly. The first thing that a system administrator will do in case of losing connection to somewhere is will trying to ping that server. Ping will send a specific packet, ICMP, Internet Control Messaging Protocol packet, to a server. As soon as the server sees an ICMP packet, it will send you a pong, the answer back. And as soon as your computer sees the answer to this ICMP packet, will say, okay, I've got the connection. It worked in this time. If not, after some time, it says, I lost one packet. So ICMP is a specific packet made for ping requests. Remember that normally we don't use ICMP to transmit data. We just use it to check in the connectivity. But technically, if you are a geek, you are a hacker, you can read and put some data in it and do cool things using it. The last thing you need to know is the concept of ports in the computer. Up to now, we know the IP addresses, so you can reach a computer, a server. We know the TCP, UDP, different methods to send data to these computers. But who should answer back to this compute to this packet you have a web server on your computer you have a ssh server you have the server here you have a web server on it you have a ssh server on it you have a chat server on it and you have a telnet server on it someone sends you a request to give me the home page of your website who should answer back to this is solved by ports. Ports like are holes or ports in your computer. Just imagine you have a hose connected to your computer. 
to some specific entrance port. Entrances do have numbers. For example, this can be port 80 connected to your web server. This can be port 23 connected to your telnet server. You write your own service. It says, okay, I want to run a service here and I want to assign a port number to it. Normally, normal people should assign higher port numbers. For example, you assign 6,000. For example, you can assign up to 64,000 and anything uh, over 1,024 should, can be used by normal users. Anything lower than this should be used only by the root user. I mean, you need root access to run these services. So you have a computer, you have different services running on it. Each service will connect to specific port, technically will listen to a specific port. So if you are running in, for example, engine X web server, it will listen on port 80. So whenever someone connects to your computer, they should say, I have this data, which is request like, send me the first page of your web server. You should send it to this specific IT IP and you should send it to this port. So a normal request will look like this. 52300, which is the IP address of the server, port 80. When this reaches the server, your operating system will pick up the request, will have this packet, kind of. It might be consist of different packets. And we'll look at this port number, we'll check who is listening to this port and we'll deliver it to this uh, process. With this method, your computer can have different services running on it on different ports. Whenever a computer connects to another computer on an IP network, you are connecting to this one on an IP address and a port. And you are opening this connection from some port here. This is what ports mean. You have TCP ports and UDP ports. Unfortunately, there is a kind of long list of ports which you should know. The question is, do you need to memorize this? The answer is, if you are, a exper you are an experienced system administrator, you kind of know all of these ports by heart because you have seen them times and times and times. If you are not, Review them times and times. It's good to know about these ports. FTP for file transfer uses two ports. SSH uses port 22. Telnet uses port 23. The fun fact is, historically, we have FTP and Telnet. Someone invented SSH and requested 22 because it's super cool to have a port just between FTP and Telnet. And now SSH does whatever. FTP and Telnet does in most cases for us. SMTP for networking, DNS for domain name servers, HTTP for uh, which is for uh, port 80 is for web servers. And most of these do have an equivalent with the S in the end, which is secure or SSL or other methods we have for securing the connection, encrypting the connection. For HTTP is 443. And for example, if there is a web server somewhere, you want to connect to it, you have to give it the IP address and port 80. But if you are using your web browser, you don't need to specify port 80 because your web browser normally will request port 80 if it's not specified. POP3 for email, NTP for network time protocol, you've seen it, NetBIOS, IMAP, SNMP, SNMP for emails and lots of Sorry for messaging about the status of devices and this kind of stuff and lots of other things. Quick hint is whatever above 400 in this list is for secure versions of the same things. Review this. Also, if you are on a Linux machine, there is an interesting file, etc. Services, which contains this information. And for example, says if you have, for example, I don't know, SNMP, you can search for SNMP. It says, okay, SNMP normally runs on 
161 with TCP or 161 with UDP. And also there are some names for this. So for example, if you have port 80 and in a program with like TCP dump, you should specify a port. You can use a shortcut www and the program will know that this is HTTP or 80 and it works on TCP. Anyway, this is all I believe you need to know. I will continue with how to configure on the next session. I again uh, recommend you to have a look to other videos, to other resources, Network Plus, CCNA, and have a better knowledge about the networking. We covered IP version 6 in the first video, so nothing more here. Have fun.